Hey everybody, it's Michelle with Florida Keys Birding, and I'm coming to you this morning live from Hurricane Helene, coming across the Keys right now, rain bands, high winds, all that good stuff, and I thought, what a better time than today to talk about what happens to birds that are migrating during a hurricane. So let's get started. So each year, migratory birds cross the Gulf of Mexico right in the middle of peak hurricane season. It's kind of risky, but it's what they do. Millions of tiny songbirds weighing less than an ounce, like hummingbirds, warblers, and vireos, migrate thousands of miles to Central and South America. But what happens when they come face to face with a hurricane right in the middle of their journey? Did anybody check the bird cast this morning? You'll see that last night's birds avoided the entire eastern seaboard. This tells us that in general, most birds will wait for favorable winds and weather before starting their migratory flight. They really don't want to get caught in a storm any more than we do. Because of this, it doesn't often happen that they strike out over water during a hurricane, but some birds will already be well offshore when a storm begins. In this case, birds can do one of three things. They can avoid the storm by flying around it, ride the winds, or shelter on the ground. Even though migrants have enough fat and fuel reserves to make it across the 600 mile gulf crossing in favorable winds, they may not have enough energy to survive if they have to fight against headwinds, so they have to make a decision when a storm approaches in the middle of migration season. So in the case when a bird just decides to hunker down and kind of stay where they are and wait for a storm to pass, they may have problems finding safe supplies of food in areas where the storm has devastated everything. Before and after flights, migrants have higher than normal food requirements, so this could really affect their journey and be a big problem. When they end up in competition for food with resident birds in hurricane-prone areas who also suffer from their food supplies being diminished, such as fruits and berries being stripped off trees and shrubs from the high winds, like migrants, they may wander to other areas to search for food. I believe this happened after Hurricane Ian, I believe it was. Yeah, I want to say this happened where a lot of people said that all their birds were gone, that they couldn't find any birds, not just migratory birds, but I think regular birds too because they lost habitat. So yeah, it can really affect these areas. So what can we expect to see with Hurricane Helene? I think that it just depends whether it's passing by you, close to you, over you, or whether you're getting a direct hit. Because in general, you know, large storm systems can drive birds really far off course, um, but the stronger flyers will tend to move ahead of the storm, carried by the winds at the forefront of the weather system, while smaller, less strong flyers will try to fly around the storm, or they may wait, you know, they may wait all together before even, even going. Um, they'll they'll kind of try to wait till winds are more favorable. So for example, brown pelicans, magnificent frigate birds, and other oceanic birds like tropic birds, gannets, boobies, um, these have been recorded really far inland sometimes, even thousands of miles from the coast. Hello, the flamingos that showed up <laughs> after Idalia, right? Um, you know, in this case, uh, with Idalia, you know, hundreds of frigate birds were seen showing up inland over the Florida Keys and probably other areas, uh, but not only them, again, the flamingos were flung all the way from the Yucatan to the Florida coast and even you know as far north as I think Minnesota or something crazy like that in the United States so um, can we expect to see flamingos coming again you know we don't really know we're just gonna have to wait and see tomorrow um, when we go out and, and check for birds um, but I guarantee you the frigate birds are probably already inland um, all the other um, oceanic birds and things like that they're on their way as well if they're not already here or they will be um, because some of them will get stuck in the eye and they'll kind of have to ride the storm until they reach land so um, if you're going out birding after the storm you're going to want to check for a lot of seabirds shorebirds and things like that um, so something really interesting that I read was that modern tracking devices have been allowed by scientists to monitor how migratory birds respond to hurricanes, and some birds have been observed flying in circular patterns to avoid the storm, while others have been found riding the winds along the edges.
If you're on the West Coast, you can expect to see burrowing owls leaving their burrows and finding higher ground to hunker down at. It's okay, just leave them be and they'll be good to go. I want to say during the last storm that hit the West Coast a couple years ago, um, the really bad one, there was a really bad one back then, and I believe only five burrowing owls died and the rest of them survived. So yeah, I have a video specifically about burrowing owls and hurricanes in this playlist if you want to check it out. Um, so if you're in the area that's getting a direct hit, you will notice suddenly all the birds will leave and there will be total silence. Not even a mosquito. <laughs> I noticed this during Irma. Um, and there was not a peep 24 hours before it hit us. So, and you're probably going to notice that birds have completely left your habitat and may not come back because there's not much to come back to, unfortunately. But it's not forever. Your habitat will regenerate you know they will rebuild it'll come back and the birds will return so once the storm has passed through your area be sure to get out birding the coastlines local forests hammock patches you can expect to see migrants migrating warblers oceanic birds shorebirds to show up along the coast and songbirds in the forest and hammock areas that either were grounded by the storm um, and some that were also waiting to move that were already here that hunkered down and was just waiting for the storm to pass other birds are completely thrown off track, but they do find their way back, and others unfortunately are unable to deal with the unfamiliar terrain and find appropriate food and fresh water, and some of them may pass away. So, you know, it's kind of sad, but, um, but that is the nature. That is the nature of the nature. So how do birds know when a storm is coming? How do they know when to get out of the way? There's actually a combination of factors that are going on here. One of the most reliable ways birds detect approaching hurricanes is through changes in barometric pressure. As a storm approaches, the atmospheric pressure drops significantly and birds are highly sensitive to these pressure changes and they can detect even slight variations. The drop in pressure can occur hours, even days before storms arrive, giving birds enough time to alter their behavior and their flying patterns, maybe delaying migration, seeking shelter, or changing their flight paths. Other factors like shifting winds, wind speed, direction of wind, electromagnetic field sensitivity, infrasound, experience, and air temperature drops can all alert a bird that a storm is coming. You might think it's crazy, but so far this morning, there are some birders reporting in the WhatsApp chat that they're down at the beaches on the East Coast and at Marco Island, and they're reporting things like hundreds of black-bellied plovers on the beaches, sooty turns, somebody reported a Tahiti petrel. Yesterday in Brevard County, they were reporting jaegers, shearwaters, and many other birds that had been blown inland out from the ocean. I don't recommend anybody go out to the beaches right now with the high winds, but Friday will be a much safer day if you want to check for these birds. At the end of the day, don't worry too much though about these birds. They are masters of survival and they know how to get out of harm's way. For us humans though, I hope everybody's preparations have been completed and I hope everybody is in a safe place to ride out the storm. Sending lots of prayers to everybody in its path.